The field of economics developed in an economy where manufacturing was one of the biggest parts of the economy. And a lot of the tools we have, because economics is a set of tools, right? A lot of these tools are very well suited for thinking about factories. As a matter of fact, those are the examples that work best when talking about supply and demand curves, when talking about managers making hiring decisions. Most of what we have in mind and most of the examples we use relate to industries that are creating things. We now live in a different sort of economy where the economy is sort of dominated by these two forces. One is platforms or information economy or internet economies, things in that category. And the other is services. Now, the same set of tools that we learn when we're thinking about manufacturing, these tools will also apply when we're thinking about these two big new sectors. But there's going to be some differences. And in this video, I want to talk about platform economics and how we can apply classic economic modeling to platform economics and the particular issues that are going to change slightly if we want to translate classic economic tools into the new economy. So first of all, what is a platform? And I highly recommend this book, The Platform Revolution, but basically a platform is a company, usually online or having some sort of digital format to it, where the main product they're giving is access to the other customers of the product. You go on Facebook to access other users of Facebook. You go on Amazon to access other users of Amazon because sellers are often users as well. Oftentimes the people selling the products are not Amazon itself, although Amazon is increasingly um, creating products that sell well and sort of competing uh, firms out of business that they recognize doing well on their platform. And there's some anti-competitive issues with that, but that's for another video. Back to platform economics. Basically, platforms are businesses who are driven by demand side economies of scale, which is also referred to as network effects. It's the fact that the people you've attracted to your space, that is the main part of the product. It's the quantity of people involved. So when we're thinking about platforms, there's going to be two big differences when we think about how we use economic tools. And the first of these differences has to do with the zero marginal cost society. I mean, there's also a book, um, this is the book, I highly recommend it as well if you're interested in these issues. And it's a bit of an exaggeration to say that it's zero marginal cost because there is a bit of money involved in upkeep of a website, in improving the user interface working through issues in the interface, that does cost money, so it's not zero marginal cost. But the marginal cost of adding an additional user is usually extremely low relative to the fixed cost of developing the platform. So with most manufacturing firms, historically, there is an investment in infrastructure. You need to buy some robots, you need to buy some space. You, you do have some fixed costs up front, but oftentimes the greater costs for these manufacturing firms is in the variable costs. It's in the costs associated with the labor you need to create each unit, with the, the raw materials you put into each unit. Those are a big part of what firms are managing. Whereas when you look at platform economics, the lion's share of the financial investment happens before users ever show up. You want a product that's already good enough to where it's going to attract users, and you'll need a little bit of money into the upkeep once you start um, building users and into adding more space on your platform and such, but those costs are much, much smaller. So that's one big difference when we're looking at platform economics versus manufacturing economics. The second big difference has to do with quantity. So when you learn Economics 101, you're always thinking about price and quantity. And when you think about quantity, you're imagining a person going in and buying a product, right? Um, it's the quantity sold, where there's this interchange where you exchange money for the good. That's how you think about quantity. That's actually not going to be the main factor when it comes to platform economics. If you're building a platform, it's, it's less about quantity than it is about engagement. And let me explain what I mean by engagement. 
Engagement is different for each platform. Sometimes it's time spent on the platform. Sometimes it's number of clicks to an advertiser's website. Sometimes it's number of exchanges between producers and consumers. There's different ways that engagement could be measured, there's different goals for different platforms, but it, it has to do with a person's interaction with the platform and how intense that interaction is. Now, is this engagement, is it more like an input or is it more like a successful output such as quantity sold, quantity of products sold? Well, it's both, right? You translate engagement into sales and there's multiple ways of structuring that. So for some platforms, after they've grown big enough, you have to pay to access the platform. That's one model. Other models are free for the general public, but you pay for a premium edition. Some platforms may monetize engagement by saying you can come on for free, you can use it for free, but if you're going to engage in a particular type of exchange with other users, you have to pay for that exchange. And there's other models as well. The point here is that engagement is what you're trying to, I don't want to say optimize exactly, but it's, it's what you're focusing on when you're building your company. That engagement is then translated into a financial transaction of some type. And sometimes you will charge certain types of users and not others. So like Facebook does not charge people who, people who use the platform, but it does charge advertisers who use the platform. So you could charge certain types of users and not others. And the key here is that you want to grow your user base. You want to grow the number of people interacting with the platform because they are your product. So getting engagement, investing in more engagement in your platform, in some ways that is an input. You need the people engaged to sell your product. At the same time, the engagement is what you translate into the financial transaction. All right, so the, these are just some different ways of thinking about how economics has changed based on the way the economy has changed since the initial development of the whole field of economics. And we really do need to update the way we think about the world, emphasizing these platform economies because that's how things work nowadays. Now, this isn't at all new in economics, but in, in the classic economic model, the firm's main decision is either what price to charge or what quantity to produce. Those, those are the two classic decisions for the firm's manager. And then we can complexify our models and say, okay, the firm also decides how many people to hire and how much capital to invest in. And that's sort of zooming back and looking at more nuanced decisions. And it's worth noting that the price quantity decisions that firm managers make are much less important when it comes to platform economics. The decisions that are most important with platform economics are really how much do you invest in the platform in the beginning. It's how do you translate engagement into, uh, how do you monetize it. And the price decision is there. If you're going to monetize a certain type of transaction or monetize access to a premium version of your platform, you still have to make that pricing decision, just like classic economics. That's, it's just a smaller part of the overall story.